Alright Scratchers, welcome to another super fast scratch tutorial. This tutorial as usual is aimed at my Redlands Conservatory class, but absolutely anybody is welcome to follow along. So my homework assignment as teacher this week was to find out what the When I Start as Clone tool does, because we've been using Scratch 1.4 and that's an awesome tool that is in Scratch 2.0 and we weren't quite sure what it did. But what it does is amazing. It allows you to take your sprites uh, that you've created and duplicate them and all the attributes and all the physics behind whatever the original sprite is that you created will be in each of the clones. And you can have up to 300 clones on the screen. So what's great about that other than the fact that you don't have to write code for 300 different sprites if you've got 300 of the same type of thing happening on the screen? Well you could have a main bad guy that was shooting fireballs and there could be 300 of them coming after you and each of them under their own direction. Uh, you could have a natural disaster where flames were bursting out all over the place and the program will handle everything for you so it's an incredibly powerful command. So here I've got a volcano and I thought we'd do a little eruption with fireballs as mentioned and the volcano and see how that goes. So we'll push the button and we'll see if we got the code right. <laughs> So that is really pretty awesome as somebody that's an old time programmer and didn't have such a convenient command. But as you saw, we had fireballs that were moving in all the axes, X, Y, and Z. So full three dimensional uh, fireball shooting right at our camera position and away from us as well. So let's take a look inside and see what we've got going on as far as code. So let's take uh, our sprite cat and we'll delete him and we will go ahead and assemble this. I'm going to go ahead and open the folder and I've got my fireball here. Of course these can be any sprites that you create yourself. You don't have to use the fireball in the volcano. I just thought that was a good way to, to demonstrate it. And I was really having almost too much fun with this. So with our fireball, we'll start with that uh, command, the when I start as clone, so that we can define all the attributes of what a fireball is going to be in our program. And as usual, we're going to want to have a forever loop to put everything inside of. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up um, our size and the looks of our of our fireball as well. So let's look for set size and you know because we want to have the fireball travel in all the axes uh, X, Y, and Z, let's start it off fairly small so that we can have it get bigger or smaller from that original starting position. We'll definitely want to define, let's go ahead and while we're doing this um, we'll just uh, go ahead and add our show command and our go to front uh, so that if we've got other sprites that are that are action we can uh, we can always make sure that it winds up where we want it to start and speaking of where we want it to start let's define our starting position so we'll do a go to command and it might be a good idea let's see I know from experience that uh, my volcano happens to be about negative six and 97. We'll build this as fast as we can here, but I thought I'd go ahead and build it a step at a time for you. Uh, we'll definitely want some sounds, uh, but it might take a while to find the sound. So let's see if I've got uh, if I've got good sounds that are already recorded. Well, we do have the popping sound, uh, but we've got a few that I need to import here. So I didn't put them in the same directory, so I will let you define your own sounds uh, for this, but your sound would be here right at the beginning of, of the loop. And then we're actually going to need to have some variables in, in this particular case. You can use the engine that we're building for our volcano here for your main bad guy. You can have it for a whole variety of different uh, uh, physics that you might want to do. So let's think about it for one second here and we're going to need a few different uh, uh, variables. So let's make a variable and we'll want our velocity to change because when our fireballs fall we want gravity to seem to affect them. So they should start off slow gravity should capture them and then they should speed up on the way down. So let's go ahead and we'll make a, uh, a velocity variable. And um, you know probably we would want to limit these as well uh, just to this particular sprite. Um, in this case because we only have one sprite that we're going to be cloning it doesn't matter but I wouldn't make those uh, global as far as variables go normally. So the next thing we're going to need we're going to have to have our x, y, and z directions. So let's go ahead and we'll make a variable called uh, z direction. And while we're at it we'll make a variable called y direction. And uh, the last thing that we would probably want to have 
is, uh, you know what I did two, uh, did I do two y directions? No, we've got x, uh, we need an x direction. So let's make a variable called x direction. Okay, so we've got our x, y, and our z directions. And then because we don't want the uh, fireballs to always fly the same distance, we want to have a random distance as well. So let's go ahead and make one last variable, and this is going to do it, and we'll just call that distance. That should be uh, easy to remember. Okay, so we're going to want to set each of those, and we're probably going to want to set each of those to a, a random value. So let's go ahead and we'll bring out our, our set distance and we will alter these in just a moment. So let's go ahead and we'll say, uh, we'll make the first one set velocity. We can make the next one set our z direction. The next one could be set our x direction. And the next one could be set our distance. So we can just leave it as it is. So we're going to want to go to our operators here and we're going to do pick a random number because we want our in this case, now you may, uh, when you're doing the cloning, you may want to define uh, what any of these are. But for a volcano, for a random event, uh, we might as well let it go ahead and pick random numbers. So uh, velocity, again, I know from a little bit of experience here uh, that for this particular volcano setup, it's 1 to 15 is pretty good. If you increase that velocity, your fireballs are going to go even higher before they're recovered by gravity. And, uh, you know, for Z direction and Y direction, we can keep those pretty modest. It's not actually traveling all that far. So we can just pick a random number between 1 and 2. This is actually going to work slightly differently. 1 and 2 is going to actually function as a switch later in the program. So I'll explain that when we get to it, which will be just a few seconds. And for distance, we'll go ahead and we can have it go anywhere from minus 20. So we can have it fire off to the left uh, to a positive 20 if you like. And you can change that distance. Uh, you can make it short if you want your vol uh, volcano to have a small eruption, or you can make it bigger if you want everything flying <laughs> completely off the screen. So at this point, we'll need another loop because we're going to want to have some control over how many times it does this. We have uh, only 300 iterations we can do, although you know what? You can reset it and you can keep going. So the reason they limited it to 300 is they just wanted to prevent lag. If you had a cloning that was just going on uh, you know, in an endless loop, uh, you could end up lagging out your computer. So let's cruise on up to operators, and we will get an operator for our repeat and tell. And what we'll do is we'll have it go ahead and repeat this loop from the time our fireball leaves the volcano until the time that it reaches the position of the water. So the water is going to be at this lower edge, which as we know is 180. So we'll make it 179 is where we'll have it stop doing the loop. And that will just mean continue to work the physics on the fireball until it hits the water and then you're all done. The fireball can disappear. And of course, the fireball's position is going to be the Y position, the up and down position. So we will say go ahead and repeat doing this until the Y position is the same as the water position so that that's going to fall. So at this point, we're going to want to change Y by velocity so that as velocity changes, our Y position will begin to change. So let's grab our velocity variable. And we will put that out here, change Y by velocity. Uh, we're going to change velocity then, of course. Um, and I guess probably, what's the easiest way to do this? Change velocity. Let's do it this way, yes. Change our velocity. Aha, it's taken off running on us here. <laughs> change velocity, I wonder what I, oh, I clicked something and I started it up there. So we'll change velocity by maybe minus one. So each time we go through the loop, uh, velocity is gonna become less and less. So as our fireball streaks up away from our volcano, uh, velocity, gravity will act on it, velocity will become uh, one less and one less. Now to make our fireball look kind of cool as it's falling, why don't we go ahead and we'll have it spin a little bit so we could have it turn each time it goes through this, uh, this loop again. We could have it turn by 15 or, or more degrees. Uh, 15 would be a slow rotation. Let's, let's speed our fireball up a little bit. Now here is where we get into the use of these switches that we made this random pick of one or two. And the reason to have these random uh, switches is because we may want to have our Z direction. We may want to have our, our object going backward or we may want to have our object going forward. So by defining that randomly, by having it pick a one or a two, makes it uh, super easy 
to, to do this. Now, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think because I assembling this a single step at a time uh, might take uh, quite a while in the video. Let me go ahead and I'll move a few things over and I will pause the video and I'll come back and I'll let you know uh, exactly what we've added and we can move through it a little more quickly than me building these out of the stacks because I don't want to spend too much of your time building this device but I want you to get it step at a time how to do it. So hang on, we're going to pause the video and I'll bring a few objects over. Okay, so here we are with the whole program loaded. As you can see, it's not all that much longer, but I just thought we'd save a couple of minutes. Uh, and proceeding on down the line, after we have our uh, object rotate there, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll change x by the distance. So our distance is anywhere from negative 20, in this case, to 12. This will specify how far it will possibly fly to the left or to the right. And then we get into that direction, which direction uh, do we want z to go? And that's determined randomly here, whether it picks uh, a z direction of 1 or a z direction of 2. And now that I look at it, I remember that this particular x direction variable is actually unnecessary in this iteration of the program. So you really didn't need to do that. You can get rid of that x direction if you'd like, because we took care of that here by saying change x by distance and having it select a random distance uh, between negative 20 and 12. Uh, so you don't really need to decide what direction x is going to fly, because negative will take it to the left positive will take it to the right. If you want to have another axis though, this is a real slick way to do it to use this as a switch so that your z direction, z uh, you know, being forward or backward, meaning how quickly your object will grow or shrink to appear to be traveling towards us or away from us, uh, you, can, you can make that random selection like flipping a coin here, 1 and 2. So here we go. So if z direction equals 1, then we'll change the size by uh, negative 0.7, meaning that each time through the loop, your object will shrink like it's going away. However, else, if z happens to equal 2, then it's going to get larger, so it's going to come towards us instead. And then outside of our repeat loop here, we'll play that little sound, the plunge sound, which is in the Scratch built-in sound effects, which sounds like something plunging into the water. And then we'll hide that sprite once it's done. Once it's hit the water, we want it to disappear. So that's our entire clone sequence. When I start as clone, each of those uh, little fireballs will follow uh, this set of instructions all by itself. And you don't have to write this whole big block of code for each little fireball that jumps out of the volcano. And then our master control here is uh, when clicked, when our program is started, we have a forever loop, tells it to uh, hide our sprite there, and then pick a, a random number to wait because we don't want to have them generated instantly or you'll have 300 fireballs unless you'd like to do that all shooting out of here at the same virtually the same time so we'll have it pick and randomly wait between a tenth of a second and three seconds and that way we'll get a real uneven firing of those uh, and create a clone of fireball and when we do the create a clone that's where it jumps over to when I start as clone and defines your fireball that is now being launched by all of this and just for the heck of it we wanted some background sound and that's all this do when clicked, forever, let's go ahead and play the sound of bubbles broiling, which is the sound of our volcano. Uh, the volcano itself actually doesn't need any code. I used a sprite. Uh, you could use a stage backdrop if you like, but I used a sprite so that technically we could move this around, and then by altering this uh, go to X and Y position, uh, we could have the firing. Uh, so if this were a moving boss or a moving character, we could have the point that it's firing from remain the same in all conditions. So actually a super simple program that you can copy over. You don't need that X command. I just uh, put it up there from an earlier uh, idea that I had. Uh, and you can have a main boss with tons of fireballs shooting out, a uh, volcano, uh, very dramatic. <laughs> I'll kick the sound on there, and I will see you all in class next week. <laughs>